Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. Welcome to sunny Las Vegas, and today we're going to be talking about the F4 Phantom radio. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the radio, and that means, unfortunately, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking. So I did want to give everyone something to look at while I'm doing my talking. The F4 has three radios built in. It has a comm radio, which is the primary radio, it has an aux radio, and it actually has a separate unit for guard, but the guard channels are worked through the controls for the comm and the auxiliary radio. The comm radio can operate between 225 megahertz and 399.95 megahertz. The comm radio also supports up to 18 selectable pre-configured channels. The channels for both the comm and aux radio are pre-configured in the mission editor. They are manipulated with this dial for the comm radio and this dial for the aux radio. The program or the manual channel entry is enabled by toggling between preset channels which uses the channels programmed into the comm channels and manual which will use whichever channels are displayed up here. An interesting capability of the comm channels is that an empty comm channel can be programmed to a manual channel by clicking the set button and that will load it into pre-programmed comm channels. Changing the radio select dial functions for both the comm radio and the aux radio. The comm radio sections are up on the top and the aux radio are at the bottom. When in off position it is all radios are off. The comm radio supports standard transmit and receive and also transmit and receive plus listen on guard mode. This would probably be the normal position to have during a mission because you want to monitor guard. While in these two modes, transmit and receive, the aux radio is in ADF, which means that whichever channel is in here, it will be pumped through and used on the ADF on the flight instruments. The comm radio can then also be used for ADF functions plus guard or just straight ADF. When the comm radio is in ADF mode, the aux radio is in either a standard comm operating mode or a guard channel mode. The aux radio, unlike the comm radio, is only capable of receiving. So when in either of these two modes, you're only monitoring whichever channel, the, the selected aux channel or the guard channel. Finally, turning all the way over to guard will allow you to transmit and receive on guard, and the aux channel is then just used for ADF. The volume control for the radios is the aux radio's volume controls here, and the comm radio's volume control is up here. The radio function is duplicated between the front and back seats. The light up here in the cockpit indicates that the pilot seat is currently in control of the radio. The pilot can take control of the radio by pressing the command radio toggle button here, and if he does not already have control, the light will light up green once he has it. When the back seater has control of the radio, the light will be out. Press the button and now the light is back on. Let's try out some of these functions. I have pre-configured COM channel 1 to be Nellis Air Force Base. So I will trans change this to transmit and receive or transmit and receive guard. In this case it won't make any difference. There's nothing going to transmit on guard. Put the radio on channel 1. Bring up the COM menu. ATC. Nellis. Request oh, yeah. azimuth. Four, one. Request navigation assistance. I have EasyCom disabled, so the only way I could have communicated with them was to have the correct channel configured. Manually, I have set in the frequency for Henderson Executive. So if I repeat the procedure for Henderson Executive... Pontiac 4 one. request navigation assistance. I will not get anything because I am still in the preset mode. Change over to Manual. Pontiac 4 one. request navigation assistance. Pontiac 4 one. ADF, you're heading to zero 02. Now let's look at the ADF functionality. 
switch over to ADX. Leave this in manual because I want to look at the Henderson executive functionality. Now on the HSI, I will notice that after I change into ADF TAC, this goes to a position here. Pontiac 4, 1, request navigation assistance. When the station is transmitting, the ADF needle will locate it. And there it is. Now they've stopped transmitting, and so it's lost the signal. Somewhat more helpfully is programming in a channel that is continuously broadcasting. In this simulation, I have set up an ATIS transmission from Las Vegas on 268.4 MHz. In reality, there is no ATIS on 268.4, but the normal ATIS frequency for Las Vegas, or any ATIS, is not actually within the range of this radio since that uses civil aviation frequencies. So here we are receiving the ATIS from Las Vegas. When we look at this, it is now tracking roughly where the Las Vegas airport is. So we can see that that is, in fact, working. Now for the AUX radio, I have also programmed channel 2 to track the same ATIS channel for Las Vegas. When it's in ADF mode, and this is in ADF mode, it will also track that signal. Now if I change this over to channel 1 and go to the standard command mode, I can't actually transmit anything because the, or at least to this channel. Like I said, all this can do is listen on the channel that's selected in here. In the mission editor, the preset radio frequencies are set under the radio settings tab, and then the comm channels are on top, there is all 18, and the aux channels are on the bottom, up to 20. And remember that the only valid numbers in the hundredths place are going to be 2, 5, and 7. If you're interested in how I made the fake ATIS sync signal for the McCarran International Airport, is I added a unit, and then in that unit, I gave it advanced waypoint options. I set a call sign, which may or may not be necessary. I set the frequency for, for the unit, and set a power, presumably in watts. I'm not sure what effect this has in the game, because a 10 kilowatt radio station should have been more audible than it was. And then the last thing I did, I added a WAV file of an actual ATIS recording I had made and put it on loop. And so then in the game, you can tune to 268.4 megahertz and you will hear the ATIS from Las Vegas play. That's all I have on the radio. Have a great day.